Well, hello Polygoners! I am Shaft, you're watching another Polygon Gaming Daily Cast, and this is kind of turning into our Scarlet series, because she's released a lot of replays lately, and she's done a lot of growing as a player. We've talked about that in past games, so let's just get right into it and introduce these players, because here on the bottom right-hand side of Ascension to Ire, in the blue Zerg Trunks, it's none other than the Potato, he is Tootming! And here on the top left side of this map, in the red zerg trunks, it's the Queen of Blades herself, Scarlet. Alright, so both of these players actually opening up a little bit more normal than we've seen in the past. Scarlet, of course, has taken on a much more aggressive, less economic-oriented style since showing up in Korea. We'll see if she continues that trend. She has opened a fast hatchery, mirroring her opponent. So, maybe we'll see a little bit of differentiation. That is one of the things that always made her so great, is she could pull out any style from her vast utility belt. And in either case... This is a uh, fairly slow opening game, so we're probably going to fast forward through some of this. Alright, so we have seen that Tood Ming is going for a little bit of a faster gas. This is actually a more normal than what Scarlet's doing, who's only had two out of three workers in this gas which means metabolic boost are going to be very much so delayed she is also going to be skipping the banely nest uh well not skipping it she's just only halfway there which means she's very vulnerable to that sort of thing she did start a spine crawler but it looks like she canceled it and it looks like we're about to have the very beginnings of uh what could be a ling war um, here at this third, we've got Tood Ming taking a much, much faster third. This is, again, a more standard timing on the third, but uh, Scarlet may be showing her proclivity to the more aggression here. We'll see when she chooses to take her third or if she goes for something a little more technological. Depends on which side of the macro triangle she's going to favor. But right now, she's favoring Banelings and a huge ton of lings. So getting the a little bit more economic advantage is going to give her the opportunity to make a slight um, aggression here against a player who has gone four more workers than she has three at this point, as well as a third base. She has not taken her third base and is in fact getting a second gas. Her opponent is going to be forced to make a ton of lings in defense of this. In any case, the Baneling is going to be rolling, rolling, rolling. And it looks like, oh yes, a good Baneling hit taking out about half of the Zerglings. But there are some banelings going to be finishing up here for Tood Ming. Nope, actually getting cancelled and uh, losing a couple of the banelings, but no big deal. Oh, almost getting that queen. That would have been a huge pickup. I believe there might be three queens. Yeah, three queens on both sides here. So that would have uh, limited the production quite a bit, like two-thirds normal production for Tood Ming, which would have been a huge advantage here for Scarlet, whose production is, of course, going to be behind since she is only on the two hatcheries. She's going to have to figure out some way to get back into it, and she is going to do that by going for a layer and a much much, much faster Roach one, so she is going to be prepared to transition out of this should she be able to survive this attack. Some Bailing is going to be morphing here for Tood Ming as well, but the Lynx moving in in batches of two or three. It's really interesting to see how these players are controlling this. I guess the batches of two or three are just to absorb any initial Baneling shots that, uh, you know, maybe they would didn't catch the Lynx just in time. It saves them from seeing the huge uh, flood. If you guys actually know the answer, because I'm just theory crafting here, leave it in the comments below. But right now, we are seeing a tech-based game from Scarlet, which tells me we should be expecting aggression some point in the near future versus an economic style of Tood Ming. Of course, that's putting him on a more back foot. And of course, 47 to 47 workers. Uh, there's no, really no reason for him to try to uh, attack his opponent, but he still may choose to try to delay this. He is, of course, seeing this, but uh, Scarlet already in a position to defend that. Oh, he is going to go for it, but uh, no upgrades on his side yet. He has got to be very careful. He's... Ooh, only losing four links to those banelings. That was a scary moment for me. I don't know how he like managed that because like my heart was in my chest. He's got to be super careful. He does uh, use a couple of banelings to take out the banelings on his opponent's side. Going to use another ling to take that baneling out. And uh, he's going to be forced to pull back. He doesn't have quite enough lings there to continue peeling them off. Uh, reinforcements, of course, would have killed off his own so he's just going to go ahead and pull back with that attack both players are going to be switching to a roach warren and of course taking this opportunity to go ahead and uh saturate this base he is now playing a super economic build he is like 
16 workers ahead of his opponent this is actually enough to lose him the game should scarlet try to attack this is like uh, i've heard our choices talk about like any more than 12 to 16 workers and you're pretty much inviting your opponent to come kill you we'll see if he can manage some defense but i would love to see uh you know some spore crawlers uh, or some spine crawlers rather than these spore crawlers that he's uh producing here the link's going to be uh running away from the roaches he does know the roaches are coming he's making some roaches of his own but his upgrade is going to be behind uh his opponent does have uh uh, plus one finishing up at this very moment so this is perfect timing here from scarlet who is uh swinging on here with about seven roaches uh, about seven more swinging uh as reinforcements and this is going to be a lot of drone deaths at the very minimum i don't know she may be able to get a kill right here but anyways drone soaking a lot of the damage link's gonna be coming in here to soak a lot of the damage while the rest of these roaches do most of the dps here for two means army but now there is no more soak and that means this plus one coming into play against two means roaches and Toon Ming going to be forcing Scarlet right on out, but she does have reinforcements on the way. We'll see if she chooses to morph these weakened roaches into Ravagers. I don't know if that would be the best choice, but some of these overlords are going to be getting picked off here by Toon Ming. This one may fall. Ah! That's actually not going to be good. That is close to a supply block, looks like. I mean, a text message. It is okay, guys, but these overlords, definitely not what he intended. That's got to be left over from his previous attack. And in any case, Scarlet has gone back to her, uh, to her base, and he is a little bit... Uh, behind Tudming, that is um, 43 drones to her 58 at this point. So she is now getting that a uh, little bit more of that lead that uh, maybe kill or not kill Tudming, but caused him to lose a lot of his drones. In any case, um, Tudming going to be swinging right on in here and uh, he's got to be careful of uh, any kind of reinforcements attacking from this angle and completing the concave. And don't forget. Uh, the the Ravagers here are going to be forcing Scarlet back and it looks like Scarlet uh going to be getting some of these reinforcements and has got a much much better concave on Tudming's army he is not retreating he's actually taking a lot of the shots but he may be able to break this northern wall of roaches right here but the queen are going to be uh helping rally these uh the, the, the roaches to chase these roaches and Ravagers out Tudming going to be trying to take a stand on the high ground but going to be forced to retreat to the crystal where his own reinforcements are waiting getting a little bit of a concave there himself he's gonna be chasing scarlets back to the creep but ultimately typing out the gg scarlet taking a quick and easy victory but honestly this game was a little bit deceptive what do you think won this game for scarlet leave it in the comments below i want to know your opinions but i'm going to give you guys five seconds and then we're going to rewind this and just take a look at some things so five seconds five four three two this was a great moment here for Tudme. He um he's got the third base and this sets him on the defensive. So when you're ahead on economy, you should just stay back and get more ahead. Artosa said this that all of the time. Anyone who watches GSL has surely heard him say that. So at this point, he does have the worker lead. He's got the economy lead, the base lead. At this point, Scarlet has matched him on workers, but she is going to be fully saturated very shortly and has nowhere to main R2. She is going to need to take a third base in one of these locations. Tud Ming already has a third base and he is going to be aggressive in the face of Scarlet's taking of the space. I don't mind him contesting it, but I think he tried to commit a little bit too much. Now at this point, Scarlet has just been droning and managed to fend off that attack. Tud Ming is making 10 workers to compensate for the fact that he has not been droning. But he has the extra production and even just forcing a small army out of Scarlet with some drones means he's going to have more production later so okay i can see the case for that but this is an interesting decision he just made a round of workers and he's up a third base which is going to fully saturate quicker and he's choosing to overcommit to this attack i love the initial attack where he's killing off some of these mainlings but then he gets just a little bit too greedy. Hold on, I should slow that down a little. All right, he's gonna get a little too greedy. He's already got these mainly, so yeah, use them. 
But all throughout this, you, know, you see him floating minerals in relationship to gas. He doesn't have a very good way to spend his gas yet. But he's still not getting the upgrades. The evolution chamber should be completing shortly. But this attack just was unnecessary. And you see, he's forced units out of Scarlet by doing this attack. Take it back to the beginning. He, she was at 29 there. He was at 14. At the beginning of this attack, he was at 19. She was at 12. So he forced out those units. And if we go forward about a minute. You can see that these are the same units that she is now attacking with. Now he's been floating. I don't know if his injects have been quite perfect, but he's still floating. He needs more larva. If anything, he needs a macro hatchery or a fourth base, which would have been great to have taken instead of trying to attack. Again, giving him more production. But as soon as Scarlet hits this three base production, she continues to supplement that army. Remember, she was a lot lower than this, but she's continuing to supplement it where Tude Ming was still trying to be economic, still trying to be greedy, and get completely saturated on all the bases. Tude Ming was too aggressive and then too greedy, and it was in exactly the wrong order. This is the lesson from this game. When you attack, particularly in a mirror matchup, your opponent has the same production as you do. So if you are losing units or forcing your opponent to produce their own, you should anticipate some kind of counter pressure. It's a pendulum swing. You go forward, so eventually your opponent pushes you back and continues forward a little bit. This was not a principle Tu Ming chose to adhere to in this game. Thanks for watching, guys. I am Shaf with Polygon Gaming. If you like this, hit like on the video, subscribe to the channel. Until next time, Chatelet, my dudes. If you want to be notified when we release videos like this, please make sure you hit the subscribe button. If you don't know where that is, I'm not going to teach you how to use the internet. There's probably no hope for you.